awesome. Cool. So first of all, I want to thank all of you for being here. And I really want to continue to do more of these and continue to amplify voices of color in country music because we all know that it needs more and more diversity and it's not there yet. And I'm super excited to introduce all of you to the world. And we're going to start off with a performance and introduction from Raina. Hi, how are you guys? Hey. Hey. Um, hey. I'm Raina Roberts. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> right now I'm in California, but I'm moving to Nashville the 4th of July, actually. So I'm <laughs> super excited. I've, I've been waiting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to play a song called Red Roses. Um, I'm a big Chris Stapleton fan, and so after I had, you know, listened to his whole Traveler album, I ended up writing this song. So it's called Red Roses. Awesome. Wow. 
Got to comment on the red hair too. Just perfect. Hey, yeah, I'm amazing. Hey, thank you. Woo! Such a powerful voice. That's yeah. literally, and it's literally so power beautiful. pride hair. Power pride yes. hair, girl. Uh, power uh, pride uh, hair. Uh, thank you. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, we're gonna move to you, Shelly, with your awesome backyard. It looks super sunny there in Canada. So, let's hear from it. All right. Hi, everybody, from this gorgeous sunny day here in Toronto, Canada. I'm Shelly Hamilton, singer, country sister, giving mad love to my sisters down in the U.S. or wherever y'all yes. are. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm feeling mad passionate love for you, sisters, like mad passionate <laughs> love for you all right now. If I could reach through this screen and tell you how much you are inspiring to me as a woman, as an elder, you lift me with your grace. And I am honored to be a part of this forum with you, to be able to see you and send my light to you at this time. I'm gonna send this song out and this is a song that I released just at COVID, not intending to, but it was the, one of the last songs I got a chance to perform live before we were all in lockdown. I had no idea that the song was gonna have the strength that we needed to have. But I'm glad that I have this beautiful rough copy to send out into the world. And it's COVID, so I don't got no band here. <laughs> it's COVID. <laughs> I am not usually sitting down here with my little ukulele playing for people. But you know what? I'm hanging with my sisters and I'm positively, beautifully imperfect right now. So I'm going to give you my love and light and the imperfection that it is and that we are all rising in despite all of this. So I send this out to you. I thank Rick McHugh for knowing that I love these types of songs. And he sent this to me and I said, yep, I love it. And at the beginning, it's literally a love song about, you know, holding on, getting through love. But right now it's about just holding on, getting through. So I just changed the words just a little bit to give it to all of us. So this this is my song that's out right now that I thank women of country for putting on their chart right now. I appreciate it and all its beautiful imperfection because that's what I am. And this is Stay Strong. Love it. Oh, 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 oh,
you gotta stay strong. Do whatever you gotta do. I keep holding on. Hold it before you know it. All that heartache will help from God. I'm asking you to stay strong. Oh, you gotta stay. Oh, you gotta stay. Oh, stay strong. Oh, you gotta stay strong. Oh, stay strong. Namaste, sisters. Namaste. <laughs> Love it. Oh my God. So good. Listen to that this morning and now it's just so much more powerful lives. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, namaste, sisters. Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we're moving on to Chewy. She's got an awesome neon ring going on. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to say this. I meant to do that. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm Chewy, and um, I I wrote a song for uh, for George Floyd, um, and really anybody that has ever been judged or attacked for the color of their skin. Uh, the song is called "State of the Nation," and uh, I'm going to share it with you today. <laughs> I love it. I love this song. I love this song. I was listening to it. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. 
Are just super cool, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, the whole vibe. I have nowhere to wear them, so only for you, beautiful queen. So I'm here showing out for you. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, Wendy, please introduce yourself. Okay. Hello, my name is Wendy Moten. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, but I've been living in Nashville for over 25 years, and I've had like. Uh, Numerous musical lives in the 90s. I was uh, had a record deal for me and my doing the Whitney Houston Mariah Carey era. So I was a part of that. Then I did a jazz thing. And then I was with Julio Iglesias for 15 years, singing in a whole bunch of languages. And now that I'm in my mid 50s, country world has opened up. So I'm just going through it. I'm just going to go in. So uh, you got people that write songs. I'm not one of those. And you got people that interpret songs. I'm an interpreter of song. I've tried the writing thing and I'm like, okay, but not enough to make a living. So uh, uh, living here in Nashville, Vince Gill found me, started touring with him. He just produced a uh, record on me, a traditional country record of country songs from the 50s through the 70s. So I would like to share one of those songs. We just released the record in February and then Coronavirus happened. And then COVID. <laughs> COVID. 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 happened. COVID. COVID. You know, COVID happened. So that just put a pause on everything. So, but I'm so thankful for this platform. I'm so thankful to meet other, you know, women of color who sing in country music and all other types of music. It's just great to meet other artistic women and, you know, try to create a, a, a greater bond. So I'm going to sing this. Um, song it's a time and wine that song because i love the traditional side of country music and uh this was one of the songs i recorded because you know what there were a lot of country artists females that were on the country soul side it's the part of like country soul Truth. <laughs> I'll just keep on falling in love till I can cry. Right now I'm alive, a wounded bird. I'll keep on falling in love till I get it right. My door to love has opened up more times than ever. I neither fool the wiser. To open it again For I'll never know What's beyond that mountain Till I reach the other side So I'll keep on Falling in love Till I get it right If practice makes perfect, then I'm nearby as perfect as I'll ever be in my life. So I'll keep on falling in love till I get it right. If practice makes perfect, then I'm 
nearby is perfect as I let be in my life. So I'll keep on falling in love till I make it so I'll keep on falling in love till I get it right. Oh, that was all right. That yeah. Was awesome. yes, that was all right. Thank oh. you. Yeah. That was amazing. I think it's me. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's me? Okay. Sweet. While I introduce myself, I'm going to quickly tune my guitar because as I was like getting ready to go, I'm like, oh, shoot. I don't think I've tuned my guitar today. Um, but I'm just going to echo, you know, what Shelly was saying of how, you know, just amazing it is to be like looking at all of you and meeting you guys virtually. I feel like, especially in this genre, I can feel very alone. Um, and so it's so amazing to just be on here with you sisters and just, I don't know, I'm feeling so inspired. I've got you amazing, amazing sisters. I've got, I've got a little black girl magic sign there. I don't know if it's backwards for you. I've got my, <laughs> you can't see it, but my Ella Fitzgerald poster up there. Yeah. I'm really inspired and uh, so excited. Um, the song that I'm going to do uh, is a song that I wrote about this crazy head of hair, crazy beautiful head of hair that took me so many years to love, um, you know, and accept for, uh, you know, on its good days and its bad days. I spent so much time and money, as you all know, trying to make my hair look as white as possible. And I would spend so much time just flat ironing, you know, flattering it to no end just to curl it up again because that's what I thought southern curls were like I thought that that was the you know that was beauty that was southern beauty and um it took me many years to realize that you know we're also the south and as much as you think of southern bells in that way as being the south like we are the south and this hair is you know it is the culmination of our culture and our heritage and all of the beautiful women who came before us. Um, so this is a song about me growing to love my own Southern curls. So that's, that's what the song is. Can you guys hear me well? Yes. Okay, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Southern baby, bow tied, big girl, white eyed, new eight shoes. Mama put my coat on, kissed me, and sent me off to school. For my first day at a new place, Daddy held my hand and walked me down the hallway. And he waved and said, They love you. But not all Southern girls are met with open doors. Some of us I look down on before we're even born Girls are too tight, skin is too dark To feel beautiful just as we are I'm a southern girl With the wrong kind of southern curls With the wrong kind of southern curls Nearly 15 lipstick sneak in mama's high heeled shoes. Off to my first school dance, will I get my first kiss too? Was on cloud nine till I heard my biggest crush tell me I'd have better luck with my own kind. And I cried cause I knew that not all southern girls are met with open doors. Some of us I look down on before we're even born. Girls are too tight, skin is too dark to feel beautiful just as we are. I'm a southern girl with the wrong kind of southern curves. With the wrong kind 
a southern curse Wish I could tell the bow tie girl that feels alone inside this world But she's gonna be okay, the times are changing but the world still tries to pull me down I've had to fight to love myself Sometimes it feels like I can't breathe I fight so no one has to feel that anymore Twenty-three in Music City with dreams and high-heeled boots Singing for a crowd of blue eyes, but will they like me too? All those mean words that ruled my world Don't make me feel like less than anymore Because I know that I glow and so do you Not all seven girls come met with open doors but all of us are beautiful the moment we are born Curls on two tights, can name two time We are beautiful just as we are We are southern girls With our own kind of southern curves With our own kind of southern curves I love my curves Precious. <laughs> Precious. So beautiful. I got to hear that Julie played song Suffragettes last Monday and I heard that song and I just instantly fell in love and invited oh. her on this. So super happy that I got to see you perform and that you get to join us. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited to be yeah, here. Beautiful song, Julie. Thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, we're bringing it over to Catherine or I like to call her K Ship. Um, she's at work. So she's going to introduce herself and get the ball. Well, I'm the only one that doesn't get to sing today because I'm at work. So COVID kept me. Um, I just continue to work. Can you girls doing me okay? Yeah, so far. Nope. <laughs> no. Uh oh. No? COVID. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I don't know why I got this crazy background. I guess God wanted me to be cool or something. So I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm from Missouri, so I don't know what's going on back here, but okay, I'll, I'll be different. <laughs> um, so actually, I started singing um, probably seriously about seven or eight years ago. I actually used to manage a rapper, which is funny, and he actually was incredible. We actually had a, a CD out, um, and he actually did a song for Evander Holyfield, and I mean, we did a lot of cool things, and he was international, did some stuff with Diggy Simmons on a compilation CD, and I'm like, everybody laughs when I say, yeah, I used to manage a rapper, but I just always wanted to help people. Um, I, I was really, um, I didn't grow up in the church, but my best friend pushed me uh, to go to church. I had been married for 19 years and got divorced, and she kept saying, God's on your heart. You need to go to church, and I started singing there, which a lot of people start out with stuff, and I, I'm from a small town. Um, about three to four thousand people so there was like you know one gas station one this one that uh you know one high school um so I've always kind of been you know a country girl but I, I always love country music and and I used to always think the last few years like the the Mickey Guyton's of the world and Reese Palmer that that was our hope for us and being on this call right now you guys are the hope we're the hope uh to be heard more and so it's just so amazing to be around these wonderful women today, even though I don't get to sing and I kind of threw myself in this conference room that, you know, I'm just uh, blessed to be able to just meet you guys. And I hope that we can continue a relationship outside of just a Zoom call and be able to support one another. Yes. And with that, I would just love to hear each of your experiences. And I know a lot of people would love to hear your stories because it is so different for everyone, especially being a black woman in country. 
and I'd love to hear your challenges and how you've overcome those and how your story has brought you to where you are today. So feel free to start whoever and just enjoy. Well, <laughs> this is Wendy. <laughs> this is Wendy. And um, I've been living in Nashville for 25 years. And like I said, I've had like more than nine lives in the music industry. And now that in my 50s, country music seemed to have opened up. Uh, Vince Gill came into my life. And I look at it as, uh, and, and, and with that, we did the record. And then I played the Grand Ole Opry four times last year. And then I played Ooh. it. In I, no, that's a miracle, right? It's like, oh, because I don't have amazing. the label. amazing. I don't have, thank you. I, I don't have the label. I, I don't have a manager. It's a blessing. I don't have a manager, agent, label, nothing. And I'm in the same position. Absolutely. You know, that's and a, you that's like, phenomenal. You feel like they want to open it up. They want to be more inclusive. And I guess it's just like baby steps. So I accept the baby steps. It's like, hey, because I know, I feel like I'm the cousin visiting country music because I love to sing all styles. I finally realized I'm Linda Reinstadt. I like to go from soul to bluegrass and blah, 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 everything in between. So I'm the cousin that visits. But if that's helping, helping open up a door for people who are, are country artists of color who want to get in and they get used to seeing me and Mickey Guyton, because Mickey Guyton is like the woman of color yeah. in country music. She's been chosen yeah. and she's been holding it on. You know, she's been doing it. So I always say, you know, I'm the cousin. So I, I just feel like so far they've been opening the doors, opportunities come. They gave me a space in Bonnaroo last year on the, on the Opry stage. So I just feel like things are changing. They are opening up more. And I want to be a part of that diversity and helping push that door wide open. Agreed, agreed. Um, I just have a quick question to ask everyone. Um, is everyone in the U.S. right now, am I the only Canadian that we have here on the panel? So I'm so. Canadian, but I actually live in South Florida. So I'm from Montreal originally. Ah, okay. Give me um, a so. So there's a, a bit of um, from perspective uh, and similar to you when <laughs> and a chameleon and a jack of all trades my whole career. Um, and I have always had a passion and a desire for country music because I grew up in the country. I'm a little, you know, I've always called myself a little black girl from Cherry Brook Road. Like I grew up in the country. <laughs> yeah. I grew up having that yeah. experience of being, you know, I used to run through the bull rushes and try to figure out where I was because you couldn't, we would play Marco Polo through the bull rushes and through all the tall grasses growing up. Um, I remember going to, to all these people and my father going, grab loose meat. Uh, I mean, deer meat. It's like, okay, someone went and shot a deer in the neighborhood, and I guess we're going to be eating for a little bit because you got kids, and hey, you're just happy to get free meat. I mean, we just grew up very country. Um, oh, yeah. I grew up knowing that my roots were country, and even though I never saw it, my father always said to me, like, especially when Ray Charles came out in the 60s, um, Modern Sounds and Country and Western Music, which was an incredible album for yes. us as people of color to be infused in the country music scene but ray had to do it in a way that was approachable for white audiences so mm -hmm. lush harmonies violins everything and then what happened afterwards is that instead of letting ray charles get lifted with that music they copied it and made other genres in white country music because of ray's inspiration so i look at music for me my father group brought me up to always remember we are the face of that even though we don't see ourselves we are the yes. ones that are always inspiring, even though we're not seeing ourselves visibly. So I always grew up having this passion of wanting to be in that genre, but not seeing myself. And yes. more so in Canada, back in the day, um, when you had television, we had very few channels that we could watch. So there wasn't as many people of color, let alone there was nothing in country music. And I remember being small and seeing a black man playing violin and seeing myself but not seeing any black women. So I knew that it was almost like if we dreamed enough, maybe we could see ourselves, but I never saw ourselves. 
And then, you know, I would continue to go into music because it's what I love. I love music, so I can sing music because I always considered myself a storyteller. And if it's a yeah. good story, I can tell any story. But country music is the epitome of storytelling because it don't lie. And people who love it and listen to it also know you're truth sayers. You can't bullshit yeah. country. I yeah. grew up with that shit. I grew up, don't you try to bullshit me. I'm Scotian, I'm country, don't you? We don't like a lie. You don't like a lie. So I grew up with that honesty and I went, I have to be as honest as I can be in this stage of my life and be the most authentic that I can be. And I knew my true authenticity was a country girl living in Toronto. I'm a country girl in the city, ain't no shook about that. And I know the music that I want to feel and I want to give to others right now is country. And mm -hmm. it's funny, for me as a black artist in Canada, now trust me, I've researched big time because while I'm sitting here trying to develop myself as a country artist, I've got to research it. It yeah. is amazing to me that even our genre, I know what my genre is. I feel my genre. My genre is country soul, which is a combination of the roots of gospel, which is what I grew up with, the roots of soul music that I grew up with, and the roots of country that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. I also grew up with Acadian and Celtic music because I'm East Coast, Nova Scotian. So yeah. I grew up with all of these musical infusions, yet I can't be a representative of that and give you more insight about my history and who I am. I've noticed over the years that I'm not just a singer, I'm a historian. My yeah. face and who I am is a testimony to the history of my music, yet I don't see myself. So I am very much at this point, even before COVID happened, um, <laughs> even before COVID, I've been, I realized that I myself, regardless of not having an agent and not having representation and not having, I've literally been pushed down and had to build myself up again over the last three or four years and trying to get people to believe in me. The crazy thing is now hindsight the majority of people that have lifted me and I've gotten quite a bit of media attention here in Canada and thank you women of country for allowing me a voice in the U.S. because it's time at this point I think for all of us to be connected in this way uh, uh, I would not have an opportunity to be speaking to you ladies in the U.S. if it wasn't for women of country when I approached them and said we need a voice and I can't I can't support women of country anymore when I don't see myself on it. And I'm not being cutting, I'm being honest. I cannot support an organization that I don't see my face on anymore. And I have to call you on that in order to lift us. And instead of them shying back, they actually came to their word on it and said, we are going to start this. And they've been consistent on that. So I applaud you, Nicole, for hearing my words. Because you started this. And you heard, don't me being defensive without saying anything except you know what I agree you shouldn't fall you know what you didn't follow you I stopped following you and you guys said you know what we've got to stand in our truth when we connect with you again it will be us showing by our words that we mean it when we say we're going to support it. and then you put out that playlist and tagged me and I went thank you for lifting my sisters you have absolutely come to the front and I applaud you for when I spoke to you you've done this You've done this. You've created this form for us to connect and be with each other. I don't have a lot of connection here in Canada because I look at it the way all of us are dealing with it right now. So I, I hope you don't mind me hogging the mic, but I'm long in the tooth and I got a lot to say, girls. Um, I've looked at this industry for years as this person always on the periphery as a young child wondering what it would be like for me to see another black woman of color being raised in country music. Imagine this fantasy I had a year ago when I started lifting myself in this industry that does not even know I exist in Canada. Imagine me fantasizing and thinking, you know what would be great is if American country music did a showcase of all black artists on their stage for the next words and said, they're here, let us see them all. They have yeah. always done a little bit of the white artist sings with the black artist and we do a revamp of this and a revamp of that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? They could hold their own. You know, Beyonce went and put out music acknowledging her country roots. She could hold her own. We could all hold our own. We could all, all be right. doing something as a showcase to lift each other and give an example of the music they haven't shown. And I know from my research and finding you, my dear sisters, we are a country soul and we are a facet of that music that is a huge facet of it. And they yeah. hear it in all these aspects of white artists. And I'm not dissing them. They're part of my brothers and sisters too. We mm -hmm. are one. 
but please lift up the truth that your truth of what you're playing was inspired by me the same way the Rolling Stones said we didn't know jack shit and so we started listening to black music and they've right. always always <laughs> raised up where their roots That's came right. from That's so right. we have to look at it from that aspect I am a multifaceted voice of our color story and why is it that our color story that inspires so much of you harder is not being lifted and hey you don't even have to lift me i'm long in the tooth but if you find a, another beautiful sister here in canada you want to lift her she will not have the connections she will not have the idea of who she can contact trust me i know this she will not be able to navigate it she will not be able to find her allies we will always sit first in an avenue of judgment before they look at how we need to be lifted so if they see us and see that there's a lot of things related to what we could sell as a package, but they mm -hmm. see, you know what, we need maybe a strong songwriter for this artist so they can use a good strong single. Let's work with some of our stronger songwriters and lift this person up to give her a strong single and support her and see what mm -hmm. the, the public says. I'm tired of the industry assuming we don't want seen and heard and that they don't acknowledge us. If I bet you, you took one of you guys' songs and put it out as a nonchalant single someplace and didn't say it was a black artist, they'd probably go, I love that song. If they put it in an avenue mm -hmm. that could be supported and listened to, they may like it. And it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what color we are. But if you are always looking at us and then we have this bias against us first and foremost, how can we even get a chance to have a difference in the door? Mm -hmm. So I say, if you are interested in wanting to head up that conversation, you have to honestly look at the avenues in which we need to be lifted. And those avenues in that industry have not always been readily available. You always have to do a constant source and search to figure out who are our allies and then how we can be lifted amongst the fray. Look at mm -hmm. how much fray we have to get through. Constantly clawing. My sisters, in order to find you and to find other allies like Mickey and other beautiful women of color, it has been by me constantly Googling and searching and finding you. It's mm -hmm. not because the industry is voting and listening you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am telling you. And, and in Canada, I changed Google Analytics, I think, because before when I looked for me, all I kept getting <laughs> were white, 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 white artists. Or I have screenshots. There is no actual documentation. There's no actual history. And I story and over the years and as a person who also has aboriginal blood in canada i've had the same roots of black and native blood that is not acknowledged and the strength of that history and that music is huge so what do i do i write i tell the stories in history about it not thinking anyone would acknowledge it the canadian folk music awards nominate it for aboriginal writing Mm. because they understood the stories and the work is important. So it's not just the level of being passionate about country meaning. I'm passionate about it because we are the stories. We are of what they've denied. Mm -hmm. We get the opportunity to show more by these beautiful pieces of music you sisters are singing and your interpretation of who you are, it opens up the definition of what music genre has been, which has been only this for a long time. And even yeah. for women, it's been like this for a long time. But now we need to, and we are in a position to, to say, do not deny my voice because you stand on the shoulders of my ancestors' voices, That's of right. my ancestors' instruments, of mm -hmm. my ancestors' pain. That bluesy twang that you, you sing, you could not have sung that unless you felt my pain prior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're feeling it now. Let mm -hmm. me tell you, everything old is new again. Everything that they denied before is new again now. Because our voice in our music is relevant now. And they mm -hmm. should hear it. When I say stay strong, that ain't a, just me staying strong. That's us. An experiment that we're in right now. That mm -hmm. we weren't asking to be a part of. And we now have to navigate that, navigate all that uncertainty. With that uncertainty, even more, we need to stay united and lifted to see what our next steps are as we go forward. And I don't mean to preach, but damn, I got crap to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You well, it's nice to have this, this forum to say it without being afraid. Um, without you being know. afraid, because we know this truth. Yeah. We have felt and this truth.
and it's hard, especially to, you know, to be that one black girl on the stage in, so I'm in Nashville, you know, on the stage in that writer's round. And yes. no matter what you're going to do, if you, if you say or sing some song about your life, your reality, like that is, you know, all of a sudden you're angry, all of a sudden you're this, you know, even just speaking your life and your truth. And I think that, you know, as you said, country music is storytelling. And I think that's what has always drawn me to this genre, but it's taken me so many years to even say that I consider myself a country music artist because of the, not only have I not felt my, my stories and, you know, even just looking at the people who are singing it reflected, right? It's also mm -hmm. that, you know, if someone says you're a country music artist, I look and they say, no, you're not, you know, that's not what country music is. Even though, as you said, it is what it is. We are the roots of country music. And I think there's so many stories that have not been said. And there's so many s stories that people want to hear. They want to listen to. And, you know, I think, like, and I applaud you, this, you, know, you for this, Nicole, of following through. I mean, there's so yeah. many people that you've seen post that black square and yep. say, like, today we're only going to be listening to you know, black voices, black everything. But at the same time, it feels, still feels so closed. Like I've seen those black squares, but then what's coming next? And that's really tough. Um, and I think, um, especially, <coughs> you know, with everything being closed, it's even harder and harder to get our voices heard and listened to. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I'm ready to just see some follow-up, you know, to, 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 have people actually want to listen and, and put us on stage, put us in on the Opry, you know, like I'm just ready for that because, you know, it's, it can feel very, very discouraging um, to feel like your st people don't want to hear your stories or understand your stories. I, even with the song Southern Curls, um, when I played it for like critique nights and stuff, you always for all white uh, people critiquing, they're like, Oh, I love it. But like, maybe you could have something that like more unifying or more like about everybody, you know, not just like, or why is there the focus on a hair? Right. And like, that's the thing where I'm like, this song isn't written for you. You mm -hmm. know, it's written for people who mm -hmm. would understand that. But at the same time, you don't realize that those people are out there listening. Yeah. And they're, yeah. they're just waiting for it. But if that's the thing that's going to keep just because you don't understand it, in its purest form, that's what's going to keep it off the radio and keep some young black girl from listening to it and feeling like they're being heard. We're not going to mm -hmm. get anywhere if those traditional gatekeepers aren't not only exposing themselves to more music, but letting mm -hmm. music where they might say, okay, this doesn't fit exactly the traditional of what I think it is, but I'm going to give it its chance. And I'm going to exactly. give it. And, I, and that's what I'm hoping for with this time. Um, you know, and and I, I, I'm so glad that I'm meeting you all and especially, you know, veterans in the, in the <laughs> Ooh, industry, veterans. people who have gone, you know, and, and <laughs> are paving the way and have done a lot yes. of that work and fighting. And thank you so much for, you know, and doing that for even giving us the chance to be on the stage or, and even singing, you know, and um, I'm so glad that we're getting to meet and talk and just listen and learn from each other. And uh, thank you again, Nicole, for creating the space, but Thank you, um, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah. So happy for this. This warms my heart to see all of you. And of course, I want to see you on all those stages. It's so something that Nashville and country music needs. And um, I'm not Black, but I am also Asian. And there's a very little influence of country music there, too. And so coming to Nashville, especially from LA, where there is such a big Asian population, it's just so crazy to be like, I'm supporting a genre that I love, but I don't see myself in there. Yeah, but yeah. I can tell you for sure that like, regardless of who you write it for, like there's, you can enjoy it. Or, like whatever race, gen, like gender, sexual, mm -hmm. race, whatever, mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter. Genres aren't defined mm -hmm. by that. They're defined by mm -hmm. a mood and how mm -hmm. the music and the story is. And so you can enjoy it all your music regardless. And so I'm so happy that you guys are doing that and want to continue to encourage everything you guys are doing and support you as much as possible. 
I just want to say one more thing as one of the veterans is that I see myself as a vaccine in country music. I feel like, because I go right to the core, like them opening the doors of the opera, that's 4,400 people who accept me just the way that I am. And so I want, that's my goal, is to debunk stereotypes yeah. because I, and I choose traditional country on purpose because that's the music that speaks to me but i know that's the core of country music so when they can when i if i if i get out there my first time performing there i was like how am i gonna get these people to listen to care to ex not necessarily accept but just to just enjoy what i have to offer and 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 the spirit gate came to me and said listen these are souls you are a soul if you go out there transparent you will reach their soul and they will receive you and that's what happened and that's why they kept asking me back now mind you i go in as a black woman i'm a black woman i don't change that i'm from memphis i take that in there with me when i'm speaking to the audience and i see myself as a vaccine for the younger generation who if you like your country artist that it's not so foreign it's not so bad of an idea that you happen to be a black woman you're female all shades and that's the music that that chose you you know, I want them to get used to that idea. Yeah. I'm even in a Texas swing band. Like you got, you got the Opry, you got the Ryman, and then you got the Time Jumpers. Nicole, I don't know if you've mm. heard of the Time Jumpers, but they're a national institution. And, and they end up making me a member. Vince Gill is a member of the Time Jumpers. So I'm just saying, I'm gonna be a vaccine going right into the core, right into the belly, the belly. I don't want to say belly of the beast, but just belly of it all. Just so it just, the love just starts to just, just, just run all through them to the point that when they see us, it's not a, a, a unusual situation. I mean, it, it becomes a natural thing. And I think that's what they're trying to do. They really are trying to get rid of the stereotypes and really trying to open their doors. And thank you, Nicole, for starting this conversation. Because to be honest, I've been here 25 years. And I still don't know where the black people are in Nashville. I don't know where they are. I don't see them. And I don't see them in country music at all. It's like the tales of two cities here. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's I, the tales I, of two it's cities. The I, 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 that. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I, had a, I have a couple songs that are out. And a song that I wrote uh, last year called This Will Always Be My Town. And the songwriter is the white guy that I actually went to high school with. And I have a music video. And he's got long hair. He's a rocker guy. And we actually went to downtown Nashville just to kind of walk around the day before we recorded the song. And we were walking around and they were looking at me and him and like, what's going on? And they were like, oh, she must be, she must be his manager or something. Cause he, he looked like, you know, Motley Crue guy walking around and stuff. <laughs> he was the actual songwriter for the song. But, you know, I agree. I started late um, singing. So in 2017 with the Josie Music Awards, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's one of the largest independent music awards show globally and um, internationally, or sorry, globally and in the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. And um, I won in 2017 for country gospel song. I was like, man, this is pretty cool. I, and I was like, you guys, I, I didn't have a manager. I, I did everything myself. So last year I had a duet with a guy uh, named Chuck Thomas and we, we got nominated for a song. We actually sold for 2017, 2018, 2019. I've won every year the Joseph Music Awards. I've had 67 nominations. Thank you. And it's, it's been a thing. And, and this year I have six nominations. So in every collaboration I did with a male singer was a white guy. And we've been nominated and it's been well. And I like I'm like you. I want to see the black male singer, country singers too, and the females come out and come together. And, and I mean we're we're very strong. We may be small right now, but they're, they're, we're we're everywhere. We're planted and we're and we're coming to harvest now. And I just want everybody to know that that we're here. I mean we're here for the Alice Randalls of the world and the Linda Martells. I mean. I, I, yes, I amen, Linda. Out here. Yes, yes, yes. And, and amen, Linda. We're everywhere, we're everywhere. And my newest song out, um, that's Your Love Is Enough, uh, that my uh, actual, my ex, um, she was my worship leader. And she came to me last year and said, I have this amazing song that I would love for you to do. And everybody knows I have this low voice. And so I, I, I love singing harmony, for one. That's how I kind of learned to sing. I, I started singing harmony before I ever re really sang melodies. <laughs> But um, th this song is, is doing so well, and, and Nicole can attest for it. I mean, it's it's just going crazy. But then I go to local radio here, and they're like, well, we have to be transparent with you. 
you have to be really above the bar. And I know what you're saying because they know I'm a black singer. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to take it. I, I take that as, as a, a strength, a growth to empower me to do better. And so I don't ever look at race for anything in my life. I try not to, but there's been a lot of doors shut because of it. You know, my, my ex-husband I was married to for 19 years, he's biracial. My, my ex-mother-in-law is white and people would look at look at us and stuff and she'd say, I have you know that my, my daughter-in-law is black. And they'd be like, oh, okay. You know, because she's from Indiana. We kind of know how Indiana is in certain places. So, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of racial things happen in my life, especially when I was in high school I mean, from a small town and, um, you know, things where I was running track and, um, you know, and going to a small town and people saying, calling us coons. And, and my, my track coach would be like, no, you're, we're going to stay here. We're going to kick their butt in this track meet. We did that, of course. And, and But, you know, what? there's so many things that just empower me to grow and stuff. You know, my best friend is white. You know, I don't, I don't look at color, but it, it, it gives me strength to know that, the women like you, we're going to rise up and make a difference. And then the younger ones on here, oh my gosh. You yeah. Know, I, I'm so inspired by you girls. I mean, I, I love you. And I, and I hope, like I said, that we keep a relationship going because I want us to be mentors. Even though I started a little bit late, I want to be a mentor to you girls. And, and then we got, you know, we got the granddaddy over here of them all sitting there. She's the one, you know, 25 years, you know, right here. She's our GoPro. So, I mean, I, I, I want to see, you know, the bell cord taps with the black females singing on Brighter's Brown Night. So, I, I, you know, I love all you guys. I'm, I'm inspired to be on this call. And Nicole, thank you so much for all this stuff. I'd just like to add in 40 years for me. Woo all right. You know what? Okay. You know what? I'm going to send you an award. I'm going to send you something. <laughs> 40 years for me. 40. I'm sorry. 40. So, uh, yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, oh, Canada. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, Canada. <laughs> Thank you guys, because also you you have created the path for artists like us, you know, to even go through those doors. So like, um, I just started, I just got to Nashville last year. Um, thankfully, I've had a, a really great experience because I have really great team members and writers and um, people who just genuinely care, but I know, I know that's not the experience for, for everyone. You know what I mean? Um, and so I was, I like to um, research, you know, who, who came before us in history, um, in country music. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I wrote like a whole, a whole thing of points just because how much we've influenced country music, like simply just the banjo, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. You know, the um, key, like, artists like actually can i tell you so i actually did write everything <laughs> <laughs> go girl do your thing do it do, do it do it, do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, okay so i was saying okay so basically like so like hank williams and t-tot so t-tot was his mentor he taught him the blues soul um how to change his chords right but you don't see t-tot um in the country music hall of fame and i've been to the country music hall of fame like a few times and i'm like these our African, you know, ancestors were their mentors. Like, you know, that's that's our influence. So every time I hear, you know, people say black people don't belong in country music, I'm like, what do you mean? When we helped create country music. So, um, and then okay, so also the Carter family and Leslie Riddle. So Leslie, he was like he was called like the human tape recorder, basically. And he we traveled with them for I think 15 years and you don't like you don't see him in the country music hall of fame and I'm like these are the these are the men and women who have inspired country music country music's greatest artists like why aren't they in the hall of fame themselves you know they don't get acknowledged people don't know about them so I think for country music to move forward we have to acknowledge the past and how black people have influenced country music you know, we're part, we're, we're part of it too. Yes, history, history. That's right, that's right. That's right, now that's important. Yeah. And, I and love it's not what people are doing right now. The labels are um, taking away the term urban and I think that that's going to help a lot of artists be able to be categorized in different genres. If genres even still need to exist, I don't know how they would categorize certain music, but that's been, the issue with us, I'm not um, completely a country singer, though I do tell stories. Um, my partner and I, you know, 
when going to labels or when people are interested in you, you either fall into hip hop or you fall into adult contemporary. And if you <laughs> fall into adult contemporary, you're never getting out of that, um, that section or that genre of music. The ceiling is closed off for you to even get into pop music or rock. My partner does rock music and they would never label him as a rock artist. They would label him as a hip hop artist. And if he doesn't do exactly what hip hop sounds like in that certain year and compete with the exact people that are in those playlists, then he won't get played or he won't get picked up. He'll be categorized as, as something else or he won't even make the juncture. So I think, um, and I think a lot of uh, labels and, and industry people don't want black people telling their stories. So they don't even want to put them in country music because they know that number one, they will compete harder than everybody that's there right now, as we always do. Everybody always uh -huh. wiped out. And, and they don't want us to tell our stories in a positive way. Um, look at what they did with hip hop. They turned it into kind of a joke. Everything is about money and jewelry and girls. Yeah. And you know, the hip hop was built off people telling their stories and telling their truth and realities. And, it's not like that anymore. So I think they're, they're definitely trying to hold, hold our stories down, but I'm just, I'm super inspired that every one of you are fighting through it and uh, finding your own path. And I guess that's just what we have to do because the system is there, it's in place, um, but we don't have to abide by it and we can make our own rules, you know. Yes, you're right. You're right. I hope they, I hope they, they do take our last breath. We're always going to have to do extra. I mean, it's just oh, yeah. far enough. We're always going to do extra. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no. It. I was just saying, I just, I believe that uh, a change ha is happening and this is the moment and I'm, I'm glad to hear because I'm not really into what's happening currently. So I'm glad to hear that urban and like they're changing terminology and getting rid of a lot of things that divide us. You know, because back in the day, everybody used to cover the song. Frank Sinatra covered it, and then this one covered it, and that one. And they, you know, were all over the place, all different races. And I just feel like now is the moment to be our unique selves. I mean, if it wasn't for globalization, I wouldn't even be able to make new records. Like, oh, the, record, the one that I have out, because my era was the 90s. I was doing the Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey era, and then that ended. And, and I had a nice long ride. And, you know, the, I keep dreaming and more opportunities keep coming my way. And I love country music, like you were saying, because I grew up in Memphis. Hee haw, I'm living my hee haw dreams. <laughs> I'm living my hee haw dreams have yeah. come to fruition. And I can do it with a real audience singing real country songs. I don't write, and I'm glad, you know, at least, you know, to that one be true, and I, I, can, I can live with that, but I do get a chance to have this experience, and I really believe anything is possible. So the door is open for us right now, and people want to listen. So I say we all just walk on through. <laughs> right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. My final uh, note, if I say anything, is that um, uh, two things. Number one, I am so um, inspired by you young voices in music. And I say to you, please stay true to your stories and your truth, because it's your time to really tell them. If I had heard your song, Julie, on a quote unquote mainstream radio station, I would literally listen to it and go, that's about me. And that's what it should be about. It should be about people listening to music. And the white girl or the black girl could relate to having that curly hair that isn't like everybody else's. It's yeah. a beautiful story. And that's the point. So I want to honor you beautiful young sisters and also my sisters in general. We're still continuing to do this work and continuing to redefine ourselves in music and sitting in the truth of it. You have to, as you know, Wendy, when you change your di and diversity, I mean, I've traveled all over the world, I've done this work internationally, and even the work mm -hmm. that I do here when I'm touring in Ontario, one of the first mm -hmm. things I always say at the end of every show, I'm from Nova Scotia. Is anybody else from Nova Scotia? Because I want to take away the facade of the pretty costume, the makeup and everything, and just yeah. go, I'm just a country girl. Who yes. else loves a country girl? I yes. all yeah. stand in that identity. Because you know what, ladies, every day we wake up a little political statement can't change it 
<laughs> so why not own it? Why not yeah. own every day that you wake up as this, with this light in others for them to see how we see ourselves? Because this this conversation is changing. And I think the more and more we make people understand, our point is that when you see us, you see more of yourselves and mm -hmm. we can all lift each other. And if I can hear more of myself in this industry, I stand more with pride because we're hearing all of the stories. And I stand more in pride of that because we are a part of that. So I want to honor all of you and say I'm honored to hear some of your beautiful stories and your beautiful ways of expressing. I'm so honored to be able to sit with sisters today <laughs> and feel the strength of your passion and of the work you do. You bring me to tears. You really do. And I'm so honored to have this time with you. And always know that as we continue to rise and do this work, each other by validating the truth in our voices. I'm so honored to hear your words today. Sisters, you just lift me and thank you Nicole again for giving us this opportunity to connect in these crazy times because as we know it COVID um, <laughs> hey, hey girls I want, I want y'all to I want y'all to do something for me real quick. I want you to I want y'all to do something for me real quick. Put your hand out and touch the boot. Touch the boot. Touch Put your hand out touch the boot. Touch touch boot. Touch Ooh, yeah that's the good luck right there. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Oh my God, this is so awesome. And I want this to continue to go on forever. And we'll try to keep these going. I hope to do one of these like every month. Just, you know, we want to keep amplifying those voices and bringing in new people. And you guys, a lot of you mentioned Mickey Guy King. She like wasn't able to come today, but she said she would love to join one of these. So we'd love to have her and keep the ball rolling and meet all the guys <laughs> and be sure to stay in touch with everyone and please let yes. me know if there's anything i can do for you for the platform and any new music and everything we so want to continue to ch make a change and yeah this is a good start and we're so excited and excited <laughs> you thank you Win. thank you thank you thank, thank you. you everybody nice we're to meet everyone hi Everyone. Kisses from Canada, everybody. Kisses from Canada. Yeah. Hi, Canada. Yeah. Big hug. Yeah. Awesome. I'll be in touch with you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.